Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Bradley Green of the University of St. Catherine Men's Program. Coach, welcome. How you doing, Matt? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, doing great. Well, I, you are in one of the most beautiful parts of California uh, that, that, that at least I've ever visited. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous, as, although most people, a lot of people say that about the, the Bradenton, Florida area, too. So I think we're both lucky in, the, in where we're sitting right now. <laughs> yeah. Certainly is a beautiful area, mate, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, let's uh, dig right in and talk about recruiting a little bit. Um, when do you start looking at players? When do you start hearing from players? Kind of what year in high school are they usually when you're, when you're beginning that process? Yeah, so hearing from players uh, varies. You know, we, we hear from anything from freshmen all, all the way up to seniors to last minute kids, you know, uh, junior college kids reach out in their, uh, towards the end of their second year as well. Um, but for us, um, you know, we are a small NAIA school. Uh, we only have uh, about 275 students. Um, so we typically start the process the summer before their senior year. Uh, that seems to be uh, a good time for us. I think we've, we've tried, we've, we keep an eye on juniors for sure. Like we will identify them in summer tournaments um, we do, you know, Thanksgiving tournaments and Vegas and, and then player showcases and things like that. So we'll identify players if we're out there watching seniors and we come across a, a junior that, you know, uh, we feel is a good fit for the program. We'll, we'll get in contact with them and start the process. But generally, uh, we kind of put our foot down and, and our work in a year ahead. Um, we just feel that that's more realistic to... Um, you know, kids wanting to commit to us at that stage. Um, and I personally, you know, I feel if, you, if you're recruiting a, a sophomore, a lot can change developmentally from their sophomore year to their senior year, you know. So um, I, I think sometimes you can, you can get a bit carried away if, if you go a bit too early. So for us, yeah, the start of their senior year, end of their junior year is typically when we, we start that process. And what do you like to see in that first communication from a player? You know, if they're shooting you an email, what, what, what do you want to what do you want to see in that email? Uh, well, some some basic things of um, majors, what majors they want to do. Again, as a small school, you know, we have four majors that uh, that we offer. So you know, it's great when kids talk about their playing careers and what they've achieved and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, they're here to get an education first and foremost. So having their major and their GPA are the two things that are, are, are really important because then that, if we do like them as a player, then we can, you know, go through, go through the process. If they want to be an engineer, for example, you know, we don't offer that program. So there's no point getting carried away in a conversation or, you know, um, trying to recruit them if, if they're not going to be happy academically. So first things first is, is making sure that they tick the academic boxes with their, um, their major, their GPA, um, and then video. Any video that they do have is also really, um, you know, worthwhile for us because that might give us a glimpse of, okay, there's something that we want to go and watch or, you know, maybe this is not a player for us or uh, what have you, you know. So, um, I think short and sharp is always better as well. I think the lengthier they get, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, too much information. Um, I think a picture paints a thousand words. So if you can get a clip in there of you playing, um, I think that can, that can help a lot too. Yeah, that makes sense. So how many, how many inbound contacts do you think you get in, in a week? Well, we're including the recruiting, uh, the international recruiting agencies, I'd, I'd got to be a hundred or so a week. Uh, yeah, we get, we get peppered quite a lot, uh, with, with kids reaching out. Um, so yeah, it, it, I would say over a hundred a week, probably. You mentioned the international recruiting agency. So, you know, I, I looked at your roster, your guys for an NAI school pro are, are less international heavy than a lot of other uh, NAI programs. So how does the whole international recruiting thing fit into your overall plans? We, you know, we, we've been lucky that we've had a few internationals in my short time here. You know, I've been with the school uh, three and a half years now and uh, I inherited a couple of internationals. I recruited a couple of, uh, of them myself that just graduated last year. Um, 
it was, I wouldn't say it was a, a straightforward process, but, you know, it's something that we definitely like to explore because that's part of football is multicultural and diversity and having players from all over the world. And that's great for the kids too, you know, because they get to meet people from all over and then they build them friendships and they've got holidays in Chile or England or France or wherever them kids are from, which is, you know, what it's all about at the end of the day is building those relationships between each other. So, um, unfortunately, with COVID, it's been a little bit tougher uh, just because the, you know, uh, economics and, and, the, and the money side of things, um, budgets have got smaller. For us, as you said, we're in a beautiful part of the world. That comes with a price, unfortunately, as well. You know, the cost of living here is, is quite, quite high. Um, so for us, when we're looking at internationals, as well as, you know, playing ability, academics, like we talked about earlier, you know, budget is a factor for us because we, we don't do full rides. Uh, we can offer academic scholarships, athletic scholarships, um, but, you know, there's still a cost for them. So uh, the budget side of things comes into play if they've got a healthy budget and, and they've got that drive to come to California, which, you know, fortunately so, uh, some internationals do, um, then we can get the ball rolling. So, um, but you, you get a lot of them, but again, a lot of them would be, you know, X amount of money and, sure. and that's nowhere near our budget. So we kind of move on quick. quickly. You know? Well, and I always like to ask this just because always the first question on, on, on parents' minds is, is about the money, right? So you mentioned the scholarship side of things. So how does your, what's, what's kind of the overall look in terms of athletic and academic money at St. Catherine? Like what? what's kind of an average or, or what should people expect? You know, obviously stacking people always are asking whether you can stack and those kinds of things. Yeah. So with us, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're very blessed with our university that there's no pressure on us to build a big roster. Um, you know, we, we, there's no pressure on us to get kids in to, to, you know, fill money up and, and all that stuff, you know, we're very, you know, we're an Orthodox Christian university and we have very, you know, high standards and, and, and we take things, you know, very seriously in regards to making sure that we're doing everything ethically and, uh, and the right way. So um, it, it varies, to be honest with you. It really does vary. You know, we have we go off a percentage at our school, um, you know, obviously to make sure that everything is funded and, uh, and, and well looked after um, in regards to the academic side of things and the athletic experience that, that the players and the students get. Um, so we go off a percentage of what we can offer um, and that varies to be honest with um, the player themselves uh, in regards to maybe the uh, experience that they've got, the quality that we see them coming in. Are they coming in as a starter? Are they coming in as a, as a freshman that we know is going to take a year, 18 months to sort of develop into that starting role? Um, academics is pretty straightforward. We have our chart, you know, from 3.0 and above, uh, from 3.0 to 4.0, depending on where you lie, that's what you qualify for. Um, so that's, that's pretty straightforward. That's, you know, more on the kid. Um, and again, the earlier we can talk to a, a, a student, um, you know, if we can talk to them in the fall and their GPA is, for example, around the 2.9, 3.0, you know, we can dangle that carrot that, you know, if you get it up to a 3.2 or a 3.3, you're going to be saving so much more money over the, over the four years that you're with us. So um, that part of it's a little bit more black and white in regards to uh, what what the what the students get but in regards to the the football side of things and the athletic side of things you know that that really does vary depending on um, you know what they what they qualify financial aid what what where we see them within the team um, and things like that you know yeah no it makes sense so you mentioned a little bit ago uh, player showcase and, and some of the terms you go to so what what, what would you say are the the top tournaments you like to go to to check out players um, how, and, and how do camps fit into your overall recruiting uh, plans? So the, the, the main tournaments we do is obviously the Surf Thanksgiving uh, tournament. You know, again, we're lucky that that's, you know, literally right down the road from us. So, you know, coaches travel, bless them all over the, from all over the country during the holiday. Um, we're lucky enough just to pop down the road to it. So that, that's a big one. And that brings in a lot of local talent as well as, you know, schools from all over. 
Um, so that, that's obviously at Thanksgiving time. And then we've just got back from Vegas uh, from the Players Showcase, which we've had a lot of success with and enjoy that tournament again. Um, if you've got an initial contact with kids and students from the Thanksgiving tournament, that's a good one to follow up with as well. And also start to look at those juniors um, to sort of monitor over the, over the summer. So they're the two main ones that we use. Um, we've gone out of town before, we've gone to ones in Texas before, um, but a lot of our recruiting comes from local sort of California, Arizona, Nevada, uh, those sort of catchment areas are more appealing. Kids coming from Texas, the East Coast, it's not really, uh, we've not really had a lot of success with that just as yet. Um, so they're the ones we sort of um, mainly keep our eye on and then attend. Um, we obviously go to a lot of high school games during those th that season. Um, that's a great level of player for us. You know, some of the kids that are not in that MLS next category, but are good players. Um, so they, you know, they might not be going to all the showcases and that, but they still got a lot of ability and talent. So we try and find those players and give those players an opportunity to, to play at university, whereas maybe they didn't think they could. Um, and obviously clubs, you know, we got a good relationships again here in Southern California, like, like a lot of places in across America now with you, the way youth football is, it's so massive in this country that there's so many good clubs and teams. And, um, we go to a lot of games and have some really good relationships with our local clubs. So we'll go out to practices. We'll go to local games, um, at the weekends to recruit, um, ID camps is something that where we did that. Uh, to help build the program. When we built the program in 2018, um, we kind of sort of, we, when we took over in 2018, we only had seven or eight kids in the, in the program. So we had to recruit a lot. So we, we did our own ID camp and built a really strong uh, foundation from that. Obviously, again, from COVID, ID camps over the last two years has not really been an option um, or something that we've been able to really explore we just did one the other week uh, on President's Day, which was, again, very successful, um, mainly for local local players um, on our men's and women's side. Um, so, again, that's something that we would like to um, expand on with the ID camps and do a, a bit more of that. Um, but, again, we, you know, we're literally only sort of now just coming out of that pandemic and that back to normal quote unquote where we can invite kids out and, and everything's a little bit safer and and we can sort of crack on with that you know okay so when you're at <clears throat> whether it's an id camp or, or high school game or any of these tournaments what is your what is your checklist what's your your hierarchy of things i'm looking for in a player whether that's on the field or, or off the field well, first thing is, you know, we have our squad depth chart. So we have our players that are, are currently on, the, on in our squad uh, in their positions. Um, we know who are graduating and, and obviously staying. So first things first is position. You know, we don't try and recruit every single position every single year. You know, there, there'll always be that odd player where you're like, okay, you know, he, he's got a lot of potential or we really like him. So even though we've got two or three players in that position, we, we may pursue them. But first thing is, is, is position, position specific. Um, and then outside that is technical ability, you know, on and off the ball, making sure that, you know, on the ball, they're technically sound, um, and can tick the boxes in regards to the way we want to play. Um, and then, you know, physically making sure that they've got potential physically, um, to grow and to expand and to get up to the collegiate level. You know, as you know, the collegiate game is, is uh, a lot faster and physical. It's not entirely always the best football you'll see at times, but it certainly is very quick and, and strong and, and, uh, and, and direct at times. So you need players that you feel that can um, grow with that and, and, and um, improve and get to that level. Um, so, you know, Obviously, you're looking for quality players. There's no, you know, there's no hiding against that. And I think anybody that that, that shies away from that is, is lying. You know, you're looking for players that have got quality. But for us, potential and the culture fit is really important. You know, getting to know the player. Again, what do they want to do academically? It could be the best player in the world and, and interested in us. 
But if we don't have their majors or if we're, we're trying to force them to do a major that they're not happy in, you know, that's just going to spiral and, and, and they're not going to be happy within our program. So making sure that academically we can look after them and, and they've got a picture, they've got a plan and we've, we can paint a picture for them on how to achieve that um, through our support and everything we offer academically. Um, and, and, and like I say, the culture fits very important. Are they, are they self-motivated? motivated you know what what's their why you know why do they want to be a college athlete you know are they doing it because that's what their family expect them to do are they doing it because they want to better their family are they doing it because you know there's multiple reasons for why kids want to do it so I think coming and finding out and having them conversations with the students to find out what their why is and what their end goal is um, to make sure that it's realistic in regards to what we can offer them and what we can help them with um, because, you know, again, as you know, the culture side of things and getting the lads to enjoy playing with each other, building relationships, you know, that can get you points as much as talent can. Um, so it's really important that they have them right, that right um, motivation coming in uh, straight off the bat, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk more about the school. You, you, you kind of mentioned some things there, but, you know. I clicked around the website, learned a few things, but, but give me the, the inside scoop. What, what am I, what are the awesome things about your school that I'm not going to find uh, just by clicking around the website? I think, you know, our school is unique would be the word I'd use. It's, it's a brilliant school because it's uh, we, like I said, we only have 275, 280 students. Um, we have a brand new athletic and academic building that we've just got over the last couple of years. So we're a very progressive university. You know, we've been around for around 10 years now. Um, but, you know, it's been a very slow and steady uh, progression. Um, we're a fully athletic school. Uh, we are a big goal of our school is to improve on the uh, non-athletic student, you know, building more of that uh, student body that way. Um, but we offer, you know, I think 11 or 12 sports from men's and women's um, basketballs, volleyballs, beach, indoor. Um, we've got softball, baseball. We've got tennises, um, you know, you know, we've got cross country now. Um, so, you know, we've got, you know, so many sports that we offer uh, in regards, which really creates a athletic community. And I think that that's the big thing about our school it's not just a, a come in go to class go to go to practice type school there's lots of things that we do to keep keep the students um, busy uh, keep them progressing as, as human beings um, and we have what we call a lot of cross-pollination where you know when you're at our school you know my players are happy talking to the women's basketball coach as much as they're talking to myself and my assistants, you know, so we have a really close knit community feel. Um, and it's quite exciting for the, for the, for the students because every year we're getting bigger and better, you know, um, in the Calpac division, uh, we've already had our baseball win the division. We've had our uh, beach volleyball win, win the league. Uh, we just had our men's basketball won their division, uh, tennis, women's tennis won the GSAC um softball won the cow pack last year as well so you know as a as a school you know even though we are we are small um you know i think that one thing that we provide is is a lot of support and again a lot of community type feel which is is, is again it's kind of unique because kids can come in and have a name have a face um everybody know who they are um and and generally you know get well looked after in regards to making sure that they have the best academic uh, athletic experience as, as an athlete and get well looked after and treated professionally. But we're not going to shy away from the fact that we want to produce good students uh, with good grades and, and make sure we set them up for success because, you know, the college playing days come and go. And then there's a big whole wide world out there and we want to make sure that our players leave with an identity and, uh, um, and make sure that they're, you know, we set them off. And when they're in the community, people are like, oh, they must have gone to USK because of the way they, they act and, and behave, you know. So that's the ultimate drive that we have. Um, and thankfully, we're having success um, as an ac athletic department um, with, with that in mind. So, yeah, I think that, that that would be the biggest thing for me is, is really, you know, 
becoming a part of a community and not just a not just a player or uh, you know a team oh that's great um and i think you mentioned before in terms of support you know being all, almost all athletes there at the school so so how do your students balance that academic and athletic component and, and what kind of support systems are there in place that the school offers so there's we're very lucky that we offer free tutoring so you know the, the students can get up to three three free free tutoring a week um, so that really helps them um, off the field in regards to making sure that they they stay on track they obviously have uh, the heads of department that they meet on a regular basis and again with the school of our size that's very doable you know it's very it's very easy they get um, classes picked for them so you know they don't have to worry about oh can I get on this class or that class um, so that, again that keeps the time frame manageable for them you know keeping it within that four to four and a half years graduation if they come in as a freshman um, and then obviously as a team all the teams across the board we do study hall so you know a part of being you know the men's soccer program or women's or or what have you is is you know study hall is a part of your schedule um, so we do that once a week uh, when in both seasons in the fall and in the in the spring um, at the moment we're in spring season so they're doing it on a friday so on a friday morning they get together 8 30 to 10 30 um you know they open the books together um you know get crack on with their homework and do what what they need to do and then straight after they'll go in the gym and they'll they'll play a bit of futsal get some touches on the ball and have a bit of fun with each other so uh having that built into their schedule where going to study hall is is as important as going to practice so you know um i think reinforcing that and just being able to have the resources for them um to go and go to tutoring and and, and uh, we you know we harp on about it a lot because um players on the field have different strengths and they can help for example a senior that has had a lot of success with us or has come in from a, a good junior college um can help a freshman um and there's nothing wrong with having that off the field as well you get some of these freshmen come in absolutely so talented in the classroom 4.0 students you know our captain is a 4.0 student um and, and being okay with 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 having that support off the field as well if you're struggling a subject again if you're an international and english isn't your first language it's okay to ask for that extra help and that's the environment we try to create as a school that we all have our strengths and our areas of improvement so we may as well utilize each other because it's a lot easier to to bring each other's potential out that way you know well, you, met, you mentioned the, the Friday study hall right now, but let, let, let's go back to like, if you were in season, what would that typical week look like if you're a player in terms of, you know, each, you know, what are you doing when you wake up to, to you go to bed? What is, what does a typical week look like? Yeah. So if we say when, obviously we have pre-season, so we have that, you know, two and a half weeks were allowed basically before uh, our first game, you know, we the 17th or 18th, I believe is the first game we're allowed to play so we're only allowed 18 days before that to come in so that's you know that's what we have the the, the play the, the students do um, we do two a days during that point so we're in the gym in the morning um, and then we're on the field in the afternoon uh, we do all that all the way up to uh, when school starts once school starts then um, we're, we're down to one practice a day um, and again if we go if we Fast forward a little bit through preseason's a bit messy because of depending on when games are. Sometimes they're on a Wednesday, sometimes they're on a Saturday, um, just based on on people's schedules that we can arrange. But once we're in season, you know, we we play um, Friday, Sundays, so we we have to have uh, one day off a week. Um, so if we're on a on a Sunday game, typically we'll have the Tuesday off. So Monday we can bring bring the lads in. Um, for, a, for a cool down, a recovery session, yoga, that's when we'll do study hall then during that, that period of time um, because there's nothing physically demanding on them. You know, we're just literally stretching them out uh, and doing yoga and recovery session. We've done it that way instead of doing the day off the day after because we feel like recovery is so important these days and nutrition and stuff. So making sure that we do, you know, um, look after them. Then Tuesday will be their rest day. So that'll be just a typical day for them. 
with class. Um, and then obviously Wednesday, Thursday, back on the field preparing for Friday, Friday's game. So they start class here at 7 a.m. Uh, typically they finish around 11.30, 12 o'clock, depending on their schedule. And then we practice from one till three in the afternoons. Um, and then from three o'clock onwards, they're, they're, they're free um, to, to, to do their studies, work, do whatever they, whatever they do. We'll play our game on Friday. Saturday, we get them in again um, for a recovery session, a debrief on the last game, and then obviously the uh, video analysis ready for Sunday's game. So, you know, whatever happens on the Friday, we're very quick to, um, you know, regroup, refocus, uh, good, good, bad or ugly, and, and get focus ready for, for Sunday's game. Okay. So let's, let's talk more then about the, about the team, the soccer side of things. So how, how many players do you like to carry? What's your, what's your ideal roster size each year? Ideally, it's, it's somewhere in the region between 23 to 26. I think that, is, that is, a, is a great number. Last year, we had a little bit more than that. We had 28, 29 on the roster. And to be honest with you, that, that, that did cause its own problems. Um, I feel like with players want to play, you know, uh, and the, nowadays, um, in my experience, is players and students are a, a little bit less patient <laughs> with with wanting to play and, and 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 being a part of a process and and understanding you know how the, the time it takes to develop to play at this level it doesn't matter if you've played ECNL or MLS or whatever you know it's still a step up playing collegiate level uh football so um some players need that little bit more time some freshmen can come in and, and do very well um depending on how they prepare them, themselves in, in in the summer um, so yeah, I think 20, 23 to 26 is a great number. You know, I think this, this year we're aiming for 24. That, that's our, that's our number with three goalkeepers. So that, you know, that's where we're looking to get, you know, we've got, uh, 18 on roster right now. So we're looking at bringing in six, um, you know, we're talking to, you know, a lot of, a lot of players right now, uh, in, in regards to make sure we get the right six and, um, and they're in the right positions and, and they're going to be able to, to cope with um, the, the load of what we put on them and also making sure, like I say, culture, culture wise, they're, they're going to be a right fit for us as a school. Okay. Now, how big is your soccer staff and, and what role does each of them play? Yeah, so uh, I've got my assistant coach, my assistant head coach, uh, Danny Jones. Um, you know, he's been my right hand man since I took over the job. Um, so he's, you know, very hands on with the day in, day out. He's, he's still obviously part time with the size of our school. We'd love to have full time assistants in there as well, but that's just not uh, manageable for us at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so we have uh, Danny, who's my head assist, uh, assistant head coach. And then we have um, Phil Shuttleworth, who's uh, a, a, what we would probably call like a seasonal coach. He comes in during the fall. Um, and helps us out in that busy time to work with the players. He'll come in two, th two to three times a week. He'll attend all the home games. Um, and then in the spring, he'll come out maybe once or twice a week um, to, to be with the players. He's a great support mechanism, you know, on and off the field as well. And then we have our goalkeeper coach. So, you know, which I guess, I, I, again, we're, we're very blessed to have a goalkeeper coach. You know, I was talking to some Division Two coaches this weekend and, you know, they still don't have a full-time goalkeeper coach that comes in every day. You know, yeah. we're, we're lucky that we have that. And that, we feel that's very important. Um, we also have the women's side. You know, we've got talented coaches on our women's program. Uh, coach Katie, Coach Paul, uh, especially who, who we brought in in 2019 in the spring. They've done a phenomenal pro, uh, job with that program. So they work with us a lot. You know, Coach Paul Ritchie, you know, he played... Uh, for Man City and Hearts and Rangers and internationally. Um, so he's a fantastic resource. Coach Katie played professional in Canada and England. So she's a great resource. So, you know, we're not opposed to pinching them for the odd session, um, getting them to come in and work with the lads on certain topics and certain areas. And I think that helps the players too. You know, that gives them a different voice 
um, and a different perspective in regards to how to look at things. And, and again, philosophy wise, we're all very similar in regards to our expectations. So it fits in quite nicely. No, that's great. So coach, how would you describe your, your team style of play, your style of coaching and kind of just the overall culture of the team? Yeah. Um, well, to be honest with you, Matt, it's something that's been developing. You know, when we took over the program, like I said, in 2018, we didn't really have a very big roster or players or anything like that. So the first thing we needed to do was build, start building everything, you know, from the culture and the players to, to making sure we were competitive. You know, unfortunately, that first season, you know, we were the wrong side of, of, of some big results. Um, so the first thing we needed to do is become competitive. Um, stop the bleeding, if you like, you know, make sure we try to be successful. And we did a really good job of that in 2019. You know, we picked up uh, half a dozen really good results, um, you know, beat some teams that we probably sh had no right doing. So from, from that point of view, when we were building it, we were quite defensive minded. You know, we really had to be structured and disciplined on and off the ball. Um, so we were quite defensive minded and, and, and the shape off the ball was one of the, you know, key things in regards to what we would look at. Now we've built a good foundation of players and, and quality. Now we are really trying to, um, um, take a, take our levels, to, take it, take it to the next level in regards to how we play on the ball. So we want to be, you know, we want to be attack minded. We want to. We want to play good football. We want to play out the back. We want to, you know, play a good brand of football. Uh, but we also are very uh, open to the fact that we've got to respect our opponent and be aware of how they're going to play. I feel like we're evolving now to being more being aware of what our other opponents are doing, but now being braver with uh, the way we want to play and, and making sure we take the game to them. You know. Yeah, so that, you know, being braver on the ball and, and wanting to play and take teams on now is, is something that we're developing into. Uh, in, in regards to the culture of the team, you know, we're a big believer in, you know, mindset, behaviour, and that equals performance. So that's something that we really, you know, bring into our players, especially nowadays with young men, is making sure that the, the first thing we tackle is the mind and making sure that mentally... We are in a good place. We are prepared for the sessions. We are prepared for our schedules and our days and our weeks that we're, that we're entering into. And then stripping that back into that moment of, of practice, for example. Um, so if we have that focus, if we have that right attitude and positivity, recognizing that when the struggles come along, um, we're okay with that. When the failures come, you know, they're not failures, they're learning and things like that. Then after you've got that mindset right, then we think that behavior feeds off of that. You know, if your mind's good, then obviously you're going to act good and you're going to put in the effort. You're going to put in the, the work ethic that is required to be a collegiate athlete. And that's not just when we're looking. Um, it's when, you know, when you, because we spend so much time away, you know, only 24 weeks a year we're together. So it's a lot of time when we're not with them is making sure that their behaviors are correct. And then if we equate those two together and make sure that we're those two are, are in sync and are, in, uh, are going well, then the performance can come. And we feel like giving the lads um, the, um, the bravery to want to perform. Um, and, you know, I was listening to a really good uh, podcast the other day with uh, Steve Clark, the, the Scottish uh, head coach. And he was saying, you know, playing with the uh, playing without the fear of failure, but playing with the anticipation of success. You know, I feel like that is, 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 a, is, a, is a great quote and something that with the mindset and behavior, we, we want the lads to go into performance excited to perform. You know, we all know how cruel football can be. You know, you can have the best games and walk away with nothing, but we also know how beautiful the game is too. Hence, it's called the beautiful game where you can grind it out and you can get that win and you can... Um, make those moments happen. So having having that type of philosophy within the culture is really important for us. And that's something that we we embed with the players um, outside of the X's and O's. Oh, I think that's great. Um, 
so you mentioned the 24 weeks together. So you're, you're, you know, it's March, this is spring. So what does your spring off season tend to look like in terms of what you guys are doing right now? Yeah. So, um, Mondays is a uh, gym. So Mondays are in the gym. We give them a workout. Um, we don't have anything in person on Monday. They've just got school and classes. So we give them their session. They, it's on, it's on them to do it, uh, at their own time, depending on their schedule. Tuesdays they're on the field with us um, so we're on the field one till three and then Wednesdays Thursdays we're in the on the field and in the gym together um, and then Fridays is our player led session so that's where they do study hall in the morning um, and futsal in the afternoons or beach soccer and um, we're very lucky that we've got a couple of lads we've got one lad that's on the US national team for beach soccer and we've got another lad that's in the pool for, for, for the U.S. national team as well. Um, so he's on the cusp of it. So they're, you know, talented boys. So they'll take the boys down the beach after study hall and they'll play a bit of beach football and, and have a good time down the beach. Because, again, you know, why not? Why not enjoy it and, and, uh, and have some time where it's just them, them lads being lads together and enjoying each other's company? No, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that, that's again, you're in a good spot uh, geographically. Uh, same here, you know, was, uh, my house is like it's 18 miles to the beach, which sometimes feels like an eternity, but uh, we're lucky enough to be that close. So exactly. Yeah. Well, coach, you've given us a lot of great insight into your program, into the school. So last question for you, kind of the catch all. What else would you like uh, folks to know that we didn't cover or, or anything else you want to say? This is kind of your, your last sales pitch or, or last chance to to give us a nugget on, on St. Catharines? Uh, yeah, I think I've, I think I've covered <laughs> quite a lot to be honest. Yeah. So, um, you know, I won't, I won't overdo it in regards to, you know, we know, we know who we are. We're, we're very blessed with what we can offer players. And I would just say, you know, uh, for students looking to play collegiate level athletics, whatever sport that is, is, is to make sure you do your research and, and make sure that you, are aware that you know it's not just about bricks and and mortar and and that it's about people it's about relationships um, and it's about experience and you know you can be sat in an auditorium with three thousand people but at the end of the day it's who's to your left and right it, it's the most important thing and and they're the people that you're nine times out of ten spend the rest of your life being friends with so I think that you know make sure that you do due diligence in regards to your research into into universities and take the time to go and see them and meet the people and, 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 and have conversations with not just the coach, but students, players, uh, admin staff, athletic directors, uh, and, and, and really build your decision on, on the people that you're going to go and spend, you know, what will be a, a really important part of your life um, because you only get one shot at it and um, you want to enjoy it, you know, and that's, that's, the main thing you've got to you've got to enjoy this time that we have and, um, and and making sure you do your research to make sure you're in a spot that you're going to get supported and and you're going to be important and and most importantly you're going to enjoy your time there. So, thank you very much for for listening and I uh, really appreciate you reaching out to us and, and making this happen, Matt. No, I appreciate it. Great final words, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the fall. And uh, if I if I get back out that way, I'll have to swing by and, and see you. Definitely hit me up, mate. We'll uh, I'll take you to some some nice Mexican restaurants here. So, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, thanks, coach. Appreciate it. Cheers, Matt. Appreciate you, mate.